2 Samuel 14. Now Joab, the son of Zeruiah, remember this is all David's family. This is David's military leader. Perceived that the king's heart was towards Absalom. Absalom left. He fled after killing his brother Amos. David had been really upset. And like I said, I think David's love goes out for Absalom. Absalom type of, of the Antichrist. So Joab sent to Tekoa and fetched thence a wise woman and said unto her, I pray thee, fame, that's the first time that word shows up, people pay attention to the first words. That's in a very important word that's associated with Hollywood, plays, acting, or skits. Feign thyself to be a mourner. That's the only time that word shows up. She's not a mourner, but will you feign to be a mourner? And put now mourning apparel. She has no need for it, but put it on. And anoint not thyself with oil. Don't freshen your face, your skin. But be as a woman that had a long time mourned for the dead. So let me bring the Bible up to date. You're a youth leader, and you've got your youth before you, and you're going to have a youth night, or you're going to have a VBS. Here, will you wear this robe to be Joseph in our prayer, in our play? play. Will you put this outfit on to be someone who you're not, for all the parents and all the adults of our church can be entertained. Now they don't use the word thing, they use the word skit or play. Very, very optionable thing that happens around most churches around Christmas time. As we play out the nativity scene that is a lie according to the Bible. That is in vacation Bible, that's in youth group. Be someone who you're not to be, but then again, you get in the pulpit and you preach against Hollywood and you get preach against actors and actresses. And yet, some churches, it happens right there. They'll even move the pulpit out of the way so we can have our little performance. I'm against this, as you've probably seen all this through the Bible. So Joab has gotten himself an actress who he has said, here's your part, be a mourner. Here's your outfit of morning apparel. Don't put on your makeup. Pretend you've been mourning for the dead for a long time. Now here, you come to the king. That's the scene. The actress is on scene. Here, here's the scene. And speak on this manner unto her. So Joab put the words in her mouth. There's the script. There it is. The Hollywood. There it is. There's the script. Joab is already, this is what you're to say, ma'am. Take the center stage. It's in the Bible, and it's wrong. No matter what condemnation you put, oh, we're doing it for Christ, we're doing it for the church, we're doing it for soul winning. It's wrong. It's a lie. And when a woman of Tequil, and this is kind of like south, look at my dress, southeast of Bethlehem, the woman took heel and spanked to the king. She fell on her face to the ground and did obeisance and said, Help, O king. And she, that's what you do for a king. You fall down, you bow down. In the book of Esther, was he held out his, his scepter. If he didn't hold out your scepter, you weren't going to say anything anymore. And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And he goes, Help. What aileth thee? You got trouble. Help. And she answered, Now, I am indeed a widow woman. Is that true or is that the lie of Joah? I don't know. Because <laughs> we're already told that Joah put a script on her. She said, I am indeed a widow woman. I, I don't know. Maybe she is. Said she's a wise woman, but we can't. See, you're already going to set the stage for lying. And once you lie, Especially you have a lie that you know you're going to lie about. You lost your character and your credibility. And there's two occupations out there known for lies and have no credibility. 
though you may be honest as a used car salesman and politician. I'm not saying 100% of the politicians and 100% of the car salesmen are liars, but that's that's what you're giving yourself into by that trade. By there have been so many that has lied. So I don't know, indeed. And my husband is dead. Well, I don't know. I don't know. All right. Now, here comes a lie. Verse 6. This is definitely a lie. You ever read Genesis 3? You ever see how many times Satan told the truth and how much he lied? You know when Satan dealt with Jesus on the mountain, the temptation of Satan to Jesus, you know, he didn't lie one bit. And he even quoted scripture. And I'm against these baby asses and youth groups. You know, they quote the scriptures, but you're lying. How dare you have your people in your church say they are great characters of the Bible and they're out lying already. Now, we all lie. But there's a lie that you are going to say this, and it's not true. It takes character to say, did you do this, and you're in a moment, and you're in trouble. No, I didn't do it. And then it takes character to say, you know what? I was afraid, and I lied to you. I did do it. I apologize. That takes character. And that builds character. But still, though, it has that little taint of, well, can I trust you next time? Thy handmaid had two sons. Now this would be Amon, and this would be uh, oh, thank you. Absalom. Those were not her boys. She's taking the place of saying, King David, in this role, in this lie, I'm your wife. He's got enough wives, and he's already had a problem with a woman. This also will take a great character story of an event that happened in the Bible many, many years ago of Cain and Abel. Two sons. And they strove together in the field. It's Genesis 4. And there was none to part them. Now this is not exactly true to what we read in, in chapter uh, 13. Absalom invited Amon to the sheep shearing party. Everybody knew it was a party. Everybody knew that Absalom had bad feelings for Amon, and he ordered these men to kill him. They knew that. So this, this is really blowing out of proportions. And remember, what we're reading in 6 and 7 is Joab's script for her. And there was none to part them. But the one smote the other, Cain and Abel, and Absalom and Amon smote the other and slew him. And behold, the whole family is risen against thy handmaid. Well, that didn't happen with Eve, but where did that happen with the family of David right now? Where is the family coming up to, oh, you know, where's Absalom? We've got to kill him. He murdered and they said, deliver him that smote his brother. Here would be Absalom. We're pretty much done with Cain and Abel. But God dealt with Cain. That we may kill him. For the life of his brother whom he slew. Where is Joab getting this? Absalom is taken off. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm done with my family. I'm on the run. I'm a fugitive. Like Cain did. No one's chasing Absalom. Uh, that we may kill him for the life of the, his brother whom he slew. And we will destroy the hair also. And so they shall quench, first time that word shows up, my coal, that's the first time that word has shown up, which is left. Now the Jewish people, a child that is born, especially a son, is a life. And I've heard with Jewish customs that when that son moves out, they put a candle in the window. Today would be electric. 
And when the child dies, if he dies, they will turn off or blow out that candle. Uh, and the candle would be, I have a son, but the no light would mean he's died. So when you walk up to the house, oh, look at that. She's got children and the lights are shining. You walk up to the house, oh, there's candles, but one of them's not lit. Oh, so sorry. And the coal would be, here's this coal that's burning. I got one candle left. One candle's been put out by the other candle. Now the whole family wants to blow all the candles out. I don't have a husband. I don't have any children. It's not that the story of Naomi in the Bible. And she says to the to, would you wait for me to have children and raise those boys up? No, you wouldn't do it. Which is left. And shall not leave to my husband neither name nor remainder upon the earth. And the story of Ruth is through Naomi and Boaz. Was it Obed? Was it the child name of Ruth? Obed? Obed. And then from Obed you get and then you get Jesse and you get David. This story that Joab has come up, remember Joab is family to, to David. Does not this sound like Naomi and Ruth and Boaz? Does this have a little ring to it? Joab is playing on the book of Ruth to get David. And the king said unto the woman, script is over. Go to thy house. And I will give charge because I'm not going to let me think about it. Go to your house. Let me deal with it. And the woman of Tokia said unto the king, my lord, O king, the iniquity be on me and on my father's house. And the king in his throne be guiltless. Let the crime be upon me to speak even further. Lord king, I have put it on you. Anything happens now that you know, King. Now she's speaking her own words. If they do kill my son now, King, you are now responsible. Because you have not passed judgment. Well, thank you very much. And the King said, More whosoever says unto thee, Bring him to me, and he shall not touch thee any more. All right, anybody come see you and say, we want that son, you bring him to me. That's an invitation. Bring that guy to the king and I'll deal with him. So now David has passed a judgment. Right now, if anybody comes to you, okay, bring him to me. I'll deal with it at that moment. But I need to think about this. Notice how King David, unlike people who have read about the Bible, he's not making a snap decision. When the king in the book of Daniel, Cyrus or Dyrus, one of them, and they come, oh king, you're the great king, wonderful king of all the world. If you can pray, only you can pray, but anybody can't pray for 30 days, king. If you were to sign this deed, and no one who anybody who prays is going to go into the lion's den, and you know, a mastery, they're going to kill the, the lions, they're going to kill. Okay, I'll sign. Daniel goes and pray. They come up to the king. King, did you not sign this decree that anybody to pray but you? Would be throwing the king's, yeah, I signed that. Well, Daniel. And that king's like, oh, what did I do? And that's what we ought to do. We ought to not make snap decisions. We ought to be like, give it a little time, back off on the problem. Let's look at the situation. Let's look at the options. Let's look at the whole detail. And that's the best advice to do. So David doesn't make sharp decisions when it comes to that throne. Then said she, here again, on her own, I pray thee, let the king remember the Lord thy God, that thou wouldest not suffer the avengers, the only time that word shows up, of blood to destroy any more. Now, her, I can't say her son, because she, we don't know, it's a lie. But the, the son that killed the other son. When the law is he's supposed to go to the city of refuge. He's not there. And if he's outside the city of refuge. The Bible, the law says 
you can kill him as a vendor of blood because he's not where he's supposed to be. So this woman has now turned to King David who loves the Lord. And remember the Lord that God has suffered not the avengers of blood. That is in violation of the law. David, I want you to break the law. And David ought to turn to her and say, Is that man, is that son in one of the six cities of refuge? He's protected. He's not? Well then, the law says, go after him. Anymore. At least they destroy my son. He's got to go to the city refuge. That's the law. But the problem is, for the avengers of blood, it says he smote him. We can assume that the smoting is murder. There is no city of refuge for a murderer. He's to be killed right there for the blood. That's the law. Before the law, Noah. During the law, Moses. After the law, the book of Acts. So what this woman is asking, this boy has murdered another boy, her own son, his own brother. <coughs> He's got to die. What is Joab doing? Joab has sent this story of a murder to a man that has murdered someone's husband. Joab sent this story to a man who has had a son murder his brother. Now the lights are not coming on for David right now. And Joab's a murderer. Him and his brother are involved with killing uh, Abner. Don't you just love this family? <laughs> See where Hollywood gets it? They open up the page of the Bible. So she's literally asking King David now, and I don't know if this is Joab's word, but she's already lied, so we don't know. But this story has taken a point is there is no sons of hers. And the request before the king who loves the Lord, remember the Lord thy God, and violate the law of, my, of thy God, and keep in my son alive. Now how's that? Have you ever heard anybody say, well, I love the Lord, and then they sin, and they live a terrible life? There's the Bible. Least they destroy my son. Well, they're supposed to, according to the law, if it's murder. Now, if it's accidental, let's give it both hands and get him over to the city of refuge. Get him judged. And he said, as the Lord liveth, there is no... There shall not one hair of thy son fall to the earth. What'd you just do, David? You just violated the law. What could David do? He says, hang him, kill him. Does Joah have that letter in his pocket? I, I don't know. I'm just saying. Could he, hey, Bathsheba, come here. Yes, Joab, come here. I got something for you to read. How's that? David himself is a murderer. David's son is murdered. That put him in a situation. But he went with the flow. And the woman said, Let thy handmaid, I pray thee, speak one word unto my lord the king. And he said, Stay on. Like, lady, give it the attitude. Shut up. Done. Because David has realized what he has said. It's wrong. And David, not knowing that now this murderer is set free by the king, he has been given pardon by the presidency office, though they're guilty. The law says if a murderer should die, David doesn't realize that this whole story behind the scenes is he's talking about Solomon. I mean, no, that's not, excuse me, Absalom. And the woman said, Wherefore then hast thou thought such a thing against the people of God? Uh-oh, now she's going to let him have it. And I don't know if this is Joab's words or her words, but 
As soon as he makes that proclamation and let that murderer go, maybe it's God slamming him. Such a thing against the people of God, Israel. For the king does speak this thing as one which, which is false. False. That's the first time that word shows up. And the only other place it shows up is Hosea 10.2. Let him go. And the woman says, you know what the woman just said to David? Thou heart the man. David, you've got your own troubles. In that the king does not fetch home again his banished. Only first time that shows up. There's Absalom. And banish is only going to show up another place in verse 14. Only two places that banish shows up. That is Cain, a fugitive and a vagabond. Genesis 4 is not over. For we must needs die. Oh, man, she's rebuking him. And are as water spilt on the ground. Which cannot be gathered up again. <laughs> ever try to ever spill water and liquid on the ground and try to gather it up? You can't. Neither does God respect any person. That's countless places in the Bible. God's not a respecter of any person. Yet does he devise means that his banished be not expelled from him? Now therefore that I am come to speak of this thing unto my Lord, the King, is it, I mean, it is because the people have made me afraid. No, Joab sent you. And thy handmaid said, I will now speak unto the King. It may be that the King will perform the quest of his handmaid. So what she's saying, the nation of Israel has come and brought me. You're a wonderful woman. You're what? Go speak to the king for us because she's lying again. For the king will hear to deliver his handmaid out of the hand of the man that would destroy me and my son together. There's a lie again. Out of the inheritance of God. There is no son. Then thy handmaid said, the word of the Lord that the king shall now be comfortable. That's the first time it shows up. And the only other time that word shows up, Zechariah 1.13. And we live in a comfortable church atmosphere for all the world who are welcome in. Come in and be comfortable. There's only two places in the Bible that work. This place speaks about being the word of the king. The King James Bible is not comfortable among Christians today. It's degrading. It's fault upon. For as an angel of God, so is my Lord the King to discern good and bad. Therefore the Lord thy God will be with thee. And we've already read that. The sure mercies of David. Then the king answered and said unto the woman, he's had it with a bull. He's put his hip waders on now. It's getting deep. Hide not from me, I pray thee, the thing that I shall ask thee. I've got a question for you, lady. And the woman said, let my lord the king now speak. Uh-oh. Here comes the understanding that God has given David. Now watch this. Here comes Jesus Christ. Every youth pastor has made their people lie. The king said, is not the hand of Joab with thee in all this? He couldn't fool, fool the king. Did Joab just make you say everything you just said? And the woman answered and said, as thy soul liveth, my lord, the king, none can turn to the right hand or to the left from aught that my lord, the king, has spoken. For yet thy servant Joab, he begged me. And he put all these words in the mouth of thy handmaid. 
How many youth and how many people in church are going to have those words at either judgment? Because their church made them speak the script. Their church made them play out the play. Did you ever profess in your life to be Joseph? Did you ever be profess in your life to be Moses? Well, he made me do it. He told me. You gotta realize you're making your children lie. You're making your congregation lie. Faith cometh by hearing and not seeing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. I'm against it. The Bible's against it. Joab, he bade me. And he put all these words in my mouth. There's an expression in the Bible. Put words in your mouth. That's out of the Bible. That's out of the Bible. Even God had an ass speak the words of God. Of thy handmaid. That is the expression used from the Bible. To fetch about this form a script, a piece of paper with writing of speech has thy servant done this thing. The form. Joab gave her a piece of paper with what to say, learn the words, and go tell the king. Form. That's a paper. It was written down here. This is your script. This is your form. If you think I'm lying, if you don't think I'm not speaking the truth. And if you don't get your church right, form. Written down. Form of speech. The speech that he told her that was a lie to get these clothes and be someone who you're not is written down. Learn it. Thy servant Joab has done this thing. And my Lord is wise, understanding and wise. Acknowledging to the wisdom of an angel of God to know all things that are in the earth. And we're going to stop there. Because what we're going to do is he's going to call Joab in. And then we're going to bring Absalom back. I think, stop it right there. That woman has been caught in a lie before David, who's a type of Jesus Christ. And like I said, these scripts, these uh, plays, and these uh, the other word, yeah. scripts, yeah, or use that. Thing. Plays, you're going to be found yourself judging it as, as a liar before God. 